I beg you to sleep with my wife. How can I do that? Please help me. Otherwise, I will commit suicide. Kofi and Kobina were the closest of friends since they were very young. They had a special bond and shared everything, including their profession as hunters. Both of them hunted animals together for many years. The villagers knew that wherever Kofi went, Kobina was sure to follow, and vice versa. One day, the two friends went to supply bushmeat to a wealthy man known as Chief Ozi. They were warmly welcomed by the chief's daughter, Acho. She served them food and palm wine, and they started chatting. You look so handsome, Acho said to Kobina. And you are extremely beautiful, my lady, Kobina replied. They both giggled and stared at each other with affection. Their relationship blossomed, and a few months later, Kobina, coming from a wealthy family, married Acho. This made Kwabina quite rich, and he lacked nothing. A year after their marriage, Ajo gave birth to twin boys. It was joyful news for Kwabina and Ajo. Meanwhile, Kofi, Kwabina's childhood friend, fell in love with Ama, an orange seller. They got married shortly after, but they faced challenges as they had no children. On the other hand, Kwabina and Ajo welcomed another set of twins. Kofi and Amma prayed fervently for a child, but despite their efforts, they remained childless. Feeling sorry for his friend's situation, Kobina decided to take Kofi and Amma to a famous fertility specialist in a nearby village. The cost was high, but Kobina paid for all the tests and treatments. After the tests, they discovered that Kofi had low sperm count, making it difficult for them to have children. This news devastated Kofi and Ama. Kofi's mother, who visited them, insulted Ama harshly, blaming her for their childlessness. Instead of revealing the truth about Kofi's condition, Ama endured the insults from her mother-in-law. She didn't want to expose her husband's problem. Kofi's mother even threatened to find a new wife for her son. Frustrated and feeling pressured, Kofi eventually suggested to Ama that she should have an affair with another man to get pregnant. Ama was shocked and refused, emphasizing that they should wait for the right time. Kofi persisted, saying it would be a secret, but Ama stood her ground. She didn't want to commit adultery and believed that the gods would bless them with children in due time. Kofi, feeling hopeless and tired of the blame, stopped talking to Ama and refused to eat at home. After weeks of cold treatment, Ama reluctantly agreed to Kofi's plan, hoping it would end their troubles. Kofi was overjoyed and hugged her, thanking her. However, he was concerned about what would happen if the man they chose came back asking for his child. They decided Kofi's friend, Kobina, would be the one to help them. Despite Kwabina's initial rejection, Kofi threatened to commit suicide if Kwabina didn't assist him. Eventually, Kwabina agreed, and they carried out their plan secretly. Weeks later, Ama was confirmed pregnant. The news spread, and after nine months, she gave birth to a baby boy named Kwasi. However, things took a dark turn as Kofi began to mistreat the child, beating him for minor reasons. Ama tried to intervene, but Kofi wouldn't listen. He even put pepper in the boy's nose, causing him great pain. Ama, feeling helpless, couldn't protect her son from Kofi's cruelty. As Kwasi grew older, Kofi's hatred for him increased. When Kwasi asked if Kofi was truly his father, Ama reassured him, but the mistreatment continued. At 19, Kwasi wanted to start a fabric business but was denied support from his father. Ama promised to help him in three months, but Kofi found out Kwasi had some money and burned it in front of him, leaving Kwasi devastated. Feeling hopeless, Kwasi decided to leave home and seek refuge with Kwabina's wife, Auntie Ajo. When Kofi found out, he flew into a rage and went to Kwabina's house, demanding Kwasi's return. Auntie Ajo, 
knowing Kwasi's safety was at risk, refused, causing a confrontation between Kofi and Kwabina. During the argument, Kofi revealed that Kobina had helped him impregnate Ama, shocking everyone present. Kobina admitted to his mistake, feeling remorseful. Ama, torn between anger and sadness, left Kofi, who descended into alcoholism. The news of his infertility spread, and he lived a lonely life until his death. As for Kwabina and Auntie Ajo, they struggled with the guilt of their actions but remained together. Ama, after much contemplation, forgave Kobina, understanding the complexities of the situation. The moral lessons from this story are numerous. Communication is key in relationships. Kofi and Ama should have openly discussed their struggles instead of resorting to desperate measures. Infertility is not a woman's fault. Blaming one partner for a couple's infertility can lead to further complications. Adultery and deceit only bring pain. Kofi and Kobina's actions caused immense suffering for everyone involved. Family support is crucial. Kwesi found refuge with Auntie Ajoa, highlighting the importance of family in times of crisis. Forgiveness is healing. Ama forgiving Kobina signifies the power of forgiveness in moving forward from difficult situations. In the end, the story serves as a cautionary tale about the consequences of deceit, betrayal, and mistreatment in relationships, and the importance of honesty, communication, and forgiveness. Thank you for watching. More interesting stories are on the way, so make sure to subscribe my channel and don't forget to press the bell icon. I would love to hear your thoughts in comments below. More interesting stories are on the way, so make sure to subscribe my channel and don't forget to press the bell icon. I would love to hear your thoughts in comments below. Thank you for watching.